Welcome to part six of our Citrix for Beginners video series. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the installation of the storefront server, as well as the configuration and how to import that wildcard certificate. So first thing first, you're gonna to wanna to jump over to your storefront server, like I have there. And we're gonna run the installation um, ISO just like before. So if you recall from our previous videos, we had the ability to choose storefront as a standalone. So I'm just gonna run the application here, choose Citrix virtual apps and desktops, but you can choose just virtual apps. And you'll see we have an option for Citrix storefront. So we'll go ahead and select that. And of course you wanna say you read the agreement, even though you probably haven't actually read it. We're going to choose storefront and automatic. We're going to get a summary here and you'll see it's actually going to install IIS for us as well as um, the storefront core component. So you could pre-install IIS if you want. Otherwise, it's just going to go ahead and do that process. Meanwhile, since we started that one, let's jump onto our, our second storefront server and we're going to do the same process. We're going to run the executable. In this case, I mounted it as a DVD drive. So that's why you saw I didn't double click that. We'll choose Citrix Storefront again and we'll go through that same process. So of course we're gonna read all of this again, make sure we go through it word for word. And we're gonna choose next, automatic, and summary and install. So we're gonna go ahead and pause the video here and we'll resume when this completes. All right, if all goes well, you should see what I'm looking at right now where it's asking you again for that diagnostic information. Go ahead and do that if you want to. Otherwise, you can go ahead and skip it like what I'm going to do. And we should see all of our installation complete successfully and hit finish here. And we're going to open the storefront console. So give that a second while that's opening up. Let's double check our, our second storefront server. So same thing. Next and finish. And here you'll see I have two options available to me. So pretty self-explanatory what we're gonna do here. We're not joining it to an existing server group. We're gonna create a new deployment. So let's go ahead and select that. This is gonna be your base URL that users are gonna to connect to internally. So make sure you, you change that to HTTPS here and then give it a name that is uh, user friendly for your users. So in my case, my domain's ryan.local, so I'll call mine citrix.ryan.local. But of course, if you're using some type of external certificate maybe, maybe yours will be citrix.companyname.com or www.companyname.com, whatever whatever the your specific um, host name is gonna be there. And of course, we will need a certificate for this because we are encrypting it over HTTPS. So make sure we note that if you're using an internal certificate, um, I'll walk you through how to create that wildcard cert as well. Just again, just so you have a, a base understanding. I'm guessing most of you already know how to do that, but why not? So this is the creating the deployment right now. Essentially what this is gonna be doing is it's setting up um, all the base settings for your storefront store. So by default, it creates a store called store, which is what we're actually gonna be utilizing. But there are some use cases where you would have a multi-store environment. While that's doing that, you'll see if we search IIS, IIS should be there, should be installed. Let's go ahead, rather than sit around, let's create that certificate. So you're gonna to wanna to open up IIS. Um, here, just do, do not show message again. Oops, did not mean to click that, but that's okay. And hit no. We're gonna to go to server certificates. Double click that, server certificates. And you'll see on the right hand, I'll try to expand this a little bit. Create domain certificate, that's what we're gonna to wanna to do. Here, here's where you can actually create a wildcard. So it's just asterisk dot your domain um, for the organization. We'll call it, um, let's do MNL Tech Zone. Plug in my, my side gig. Um, 
Uh, MNL. I'm in West Palm Beach, Florida. What do next? Select, choose your certificate authority. So in my case, it's my domain controller. And then we'll choose finish. Now we have our wildcard certificate here available for us to use. What you're also going to want to do is go down to sites, go to the default website, and go to bindings on the right hand side here. We can remove um, HTTP, but let's first add HTTPS. Choose that wildcard certificate we just created. Sign that to port 443, and let's remove 80. Yes, and close. So now we have our certificate, super easy. We bound that to our site. So now we're gonna go in, let's go ahead and, actually let's not do that. So let's go to viewer change stores. I accidentally clicked create store. And you'll see we have under server group, we have our base URL there. Stores, I guess they don't create a store for you automatically anymore. So let's go to the right, let's create a store. Choose next. And typically you just call your store name store. That's usually the default. So that's what a lot of people are familiar with. Choose add for the delivery controller. So this is gonna be either the host name or the IP of your delivery controllers that we configured in the previous video. So mine is actually 121 for my first one and 192.168.0.139 for my second. I'm doing HTTP, you can encrypt the XML traffic but for the sake of this video series, I'm not going to. There are tutorials of how to do that. But at the end of the day, it's your internal network. So chances of, of needing to encrypt that, it's not that high. Um, whereas your, your SSL traffic is a lot more important to encrypt. But you can absolutely do so if you're secure, very security conscious. Um, we're not going to enable remote access yet just because we don't have uh, ADC, a Netscaler in play yet. Authentication methods, username and passwords are default. Um, you can configure domain pass-through. Essentially what that does is when you log into your Windows environment, it'll pass through those credentials automatically through your Citrix receiver. There are some other items you have to set up in order to enable that, but this can be enabled and configured later on. Pass through from Citrix Gateway. When we configure remote access, we will select that so we don't have to re authenticate after we authenticated already through our, our Citrix Gateway. All right, keep those defaults and we're creating our store. So this will just take a couple seconds here. And you will see once we go on to the second storefront server, what's beautiful about storefront is we can join this. The, the second storefront server to our server group. So when I make an update to SF1, storefront one, I can propagate those changes to my other storefront servers that are part of that service group. So in other words, I don't have to make changes individually on each store, right? All right, so our storefront store is created successfully. And you'll see our authentications method is there, our store name is there, remote access is disabled for now. So we'll go ahead and hit finish and you'll see our store is located here. So what we should be able to do is we should be able to take that store URL and access it. Um, but before that, let's, I'm gonna disable enhanced security just so I don't see that pop up when I open up my browser. Um, so let's go ahead, let's open up a browser here, and then I am going to copy the store URL if it behaves. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And one small change here, if you're accessing this from a web browser, you're going to, want to change the extension to store web. If you're trying this through receiver, it's just going to be store. Server certificate error. I'm not sure. We'll have to take a look at why it's giving us that. Um, but you'll see. Ah, uh, you know what? This is my fault. My DNS is incorrect. 
So let's do something. I, I left out one step. Let's go over to our domain controller. And we will need to configure DNS to point to the storefront server. So you want to go to DNS, forward lookup zone, and here, I have this going to my Netscaler right now, but I do not want that to my Netscaler yet. So let's create a new um, host, and we'll do 192.168 is going to be to your storefront server. So mine is actually 111 at host. And if I go back here, I'm going to go ahead and flush my DNS. And let's try that again. Let's open up Internet Explorer, store web. All right, this looks much better. So we can skip this for now. Go to log on here. Uh, you're gonna have to log on with your domain as well because we didn't specify a domain. And you should be able to type in your password here. And yep, so there we go. Um, we have no apps and desktops right now available to us. That's just because we haven't published anything yet. But the fact we're able to log in and authenticate, that's a big win. So the next step will be to jump over to your second storefront server. Join the storefront server to an existing server group. And then go back to this storefront server, your, your first one, go to server group, and then go to add server. And you'll see we have an authorization code as well as an authorization server. So it's asking for the authorization code. So I'll copy that. It's asking for the authorization server. So I'll copy and paste that. Then we're going to go ahead and join it. And if all goes well, do, 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 do. it did not like it. What did I enter wrong? Let's try this one more time. Authorization server, authorization code. Let me do one more thing. Let me make sure my firewall is off. And it is not. That could be our culprit here. And let's try that a second time. And while that's doing that, let's make sure our firewall's off on this server as well. Windows can be pesky. So this looks good. This looks like it's joining to the server group this time. So just remember, firewall needs to be off. Don't make the same mistake I did. And now it should be joining to the server group. And immediately it should get the existing settings. I believe from storefront one, we don't need to propagate any settings yet. But as we go back into storefront and we configure different line items later on, like when we add a remote access piece, we will want to propagate those changes. But you'll see here, it's actually propagating changes as a part of joining that server to the group. So it's not going to load balance by default. We will want to put a Netscaler in front of that, in which case you saw earlier, my Citrix DNS was going to a different IP. That's actually my Netscaler load balancer. And I'll walk everybody through how to set that up as well. So in the next video series, I want to get some resources for us. We already have our virtual delivery agents. We have an application server. We have a virtual desktop and we have our storefront server. The next step will actually be to go in and publish that virtual desktop and publish those applications to our various users and user groups. And perfect timing, this came up, it's added to the server group. And you'll see here, we see both servers listed here. So thanks everyone, hope this video helped you out. If you liked it, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to write in the comment boxes below. Happy to help out, answer any questions you may have. Thanks, you too.